Hey everybody, uh, I'm Aditya Parappa. I'm a software engineer at Aviatrix and an undergrad at UIUC. I'm Kamul Lee. I'm a PhD student at UIUC. And we're presenting our system that optimizes latency and cost in service meshes called Slate. So, um, a bit of an introduction to the problem. Um, when you have multiple clusters uh, that are spread across multiple regions, um, the load between them uh, can fluctuate pretty drastically. So, um, some clusters might experience high load sometimes in the day, sometimes relatively really low load. And, this is, um, and so the autoscaler takes care of these load imbalances, but uh, within the, with, usually within the span of minutes. Um, and so we can kind of see that when cluster east might be super overloaded and cluster west is not, and other times when the opposite is true. Um, and so actually understanding and um, optimizing latency in these scenarios is hard. The other problem that we're attempting to solve is um, uh, egress cost optimization. So in topologies, in some topologies, uh, calls to a remote cluster or database are inevitable. Um, where the call has to be made over um, to another region or another cluster. Um, when you're making these calls, you usually want to make them with less data because um, the data is traveling a um, over a long distance and cloud providers usually charge for data out, so it's called egress fees. Um, and so we can maybe see in this scenario where we have two clusters, um, gateway, front end, uh, and a metric, an MP, which is a processor service, and MP calls DB. So the call tree is very simple, but for some reason the database in US West is unavailable. This might happen because of GDPR, uh, data regulations, or the database is just simply down, um, things like that. And so in this case, the call path uh, conventionally with locality load balancing would be the red path, where it goes to front end, metric processor, and then the database. Um, however, the very, and, and here the size of the arrow represents how much data is being sent with that call. Um, the issue is that we're taking um, a very large amount of data over clusters, which usually results in a lot of egress fees and a lot of latency. Um, so an actually an optimal path for this call tree would be front end to, met to MP in the US East and then to the database. So you make the large call locally, um, preserving uh, so you don't spend that much on egress and all that. So our two baselines here are multi-cluster load balancing, where we just distribute requests between clusters evenly, round robin. And then we have a locality aware, which we try to keep it local, which is the red path. Uh, and then we have our system, and we, uh, we improve the bandwidth spend expenditure a lot, and also the uh, average latency um, for this scenario. And so our system uh, is a system that basically um, adapts to the current load conditions, um, and optimally partitions uh, traffic between clusters in a way um, that we that results in the lowest predicted latency. Um, so to go over the system architecture a bit, um, here's our system architecture. We have this is a multi-cluster uh, scenario running. You have ingress gateways, east-west gateways, um, and essentially we have WebAssembly plugins that are installed on every sidecar that stream their current load in the form of like requests per second and um, latency where they, they trace certain requests that are all agreed upon by a, a certain like a hash of the um, trace ID and um, this is configurable and um, the load and latency is streamed to the cluster controller. Um, the cluster controller aggregates all these service level metrics and then um, streams all these metrics to the global controller um, where the global controller um, has basically a God's view of every cluster, the load of every service in every cluster and the latency it's incurring right now. Um, additionally, the cluster controllers routinely perform pings between um, <laughs> between themselves, between like so it goes to the east-west gateway and this essentially allows us to gauge like how much time uh, what the network conditions are between clusters, um, because you could be traversing the public internet. Um, so with all these calculations, our global controller will try to optimize latency um, and by, by pushing out rules for um, what the optimal partitioning is. So uh, to delve into our sidecar a bit, uh, to, into our WebAssembly plugin, um, our WebAssembly plugin is basically an HTTP filter um, that uses the proxy WASM ABI um, and it, it essentially reports every second or a few seconds the 
uh, current load and the latency of every trace request. And we use Jaeger headers to figure out what we're tracing and um, what the parents of what um, uh, of the current uh, request, uh, trace requests are. And um, all of this uh, allows you to run these uh, run this extension without having to recompile Envoy, which is really nice. We also have a cluster controller. Um, which receive which aggregates all these metrics um, and serves as a relay to the global controller. Um, the cluster controller also um, enforces the policy given by the global controller um, and by like editing virtual services um, to enforce the policy. Um, it also does intercluster pings. And again, we'll talk about. And in the global controller, to calculate the the optimal latency routing rule, we use linear programming technique which is mathematically um, optimize the, the latency to minimize it. And in this example, we're going to use booking for application. Um, this is an intermediate representation in Slate Optimizer. In this setup, we have two clusters, which is yellow and red. And the edges represent the flow of requests, and numbers on the edges represent the number of requests that flow from source to destination. Um, here you can see there are product page service, there are detail service, there are review service, and rating services. And if there is, if there, we have like almost equal load in each cluster, there's no reason to reroute the request from local cluster to remote cl clusters. And this is like ideal situation, and most of production uh, multi cluster. I guess they assume that um, this is the, the, the most common case. So no cross-cluster cross cluster routing. But what if there's like severe load imbalance in different clusters? Here we have we see a hundred number of requests per second to yellow cluster and a thousand number of requests to red clusters. Um, if the red cluster doesn't have enough resource to, to process this a thousand number of requests, then what we want to do is pay for the net network latency and send some of the requests to the yellow, um, underloaded cluster, which is yellow here, to minimize the latency of each request. However, if you just stick to the local routing policy, you will not do it. Um, in our um, system, Slate, um, the linear programming will digest the load to latency relationship um, reported by SARS card through the cluster controller and run this polynomial function to predict the latency based on the given load. And we're going to model um, the load to latency model for each every service individually so that we can um, predict uh, with high accuracy. Now, um, by running this linear programming model, we see here from part of page in yellow uh, red cluster, we want to reroute roughly 25% um, of the requests to the remote clusters, the review service in the remote clusters, because these services are overloaded. And you think that this model calculate that this will be the the routing policy to minimize latency. And also we do the similar thing from um, review service in red cluster to rating service in yellow clusters. This is the example, um, um, the, uh, the output of our prototype system. Here uh, we send loads to the west cluster and east cluster separately. After profiling phase, we when, once we uh, think that we have enough traces to train this polynomial function, we start to run this linear programming model and come up with this optimal uh, routing rule. Here um, in cluster one, we want to reroute 10 number of requests from cluster one to cluster zero, from ingress gateway to the uh, product page. And we translate this number into percentage, and then we will ins install this um, um, routing rule to every single services in all clusters. Um, as for where this product might go and some um, interesting future directions in this area, um, we think that the current reporting model of metrics and latency 
uh, and load is not very robust, as in like we're using just HTTP filters and with WebAssembly. Um, a better alternative would be to move to Wasm services and do very little in the request path that I think would increase, that would um, better the um, performance of the system a lot. Um, the other idea um, that some students in our group are working on is um, per request routing, uh, where you can prioritize certain requests over others. So imagine you had a request tag with a certain header, it would somehow get priority throughout the service mesh and have the lowest latency um, resulting uh, as opposed to all the other calls. Um, the uh, final uh, example I want to offer is call graph prediction. Essentially, um, when you have uh, these large microservice deployments, um, the call graph can be dynamic. Um, so in models like book info, even like where it's super simple, there's still a little bit of variance. Um, as you know, one version of reviews call does not call ratings, but the rest do. Um, this is not very predictable, but a behavior like where a certain header is tagged with something that results in a different call graph, and um, just general call graph classification where um, given a certain um, method and uh, path at the ingress gateway, can you figure out what uh, upstream services will be called? That's a pretty useful model um, for models like uh, cost optimization where you need to know the call graph ahead of time. It's also um, useful for other things. So um, that's an area of future research that we envision could be very fruitful. Uh, thank you for listening.